one of my friends just was he was a big weekend fan mm. um the other one would listen to drake i would always listen to like you know spanish music so right listening to all this and starting to sing along my, my friends were like yo you got a good voice bro like you sure you you know you want to want to do this and they helped me out mm. i'm not gonna say that I, I was able to buy the full uh recording kit mm. but they pitched in and, and we bought a recording kit and we were always recording in the barracks man wow, those are some man. good friends What's up, y'all? On today's episode, we're interviewing Leo Kraz, a Latin urban artist based out of the Seattle area. We dive into Leo's upbringing in New York and Dominican Republic, his language barrier struggles, and how joining the Navy turned into a blessing in disguise. He also shared insights on music marketing and how he was able to reach over 20,000 monthly listeners organically. Stay tuned. This is the Untapped Potential Podcast. Hey, Leo, how's it going, man? Thanks for coming through. Going good. No, thank you for the invite. Um, you know, It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, man. man, you're doing great things. You're dropping so much music and you have a, such a powerful story, man. We're excited to learn a little bit more about you. Um, let's start at the beginning, man. Who is Leo Kras? Where do you come from? Oh, Leo Kras, man. So I, I come all the way from the Dominican Republic. I, you know, I grew up in Queens, New York. Uh, before I even knew I liked music, you know, you kind of you, you kind of get in this thing when you're a little kid where your parents just force you to listen to music or they force yeah. you to watch whatever they watch on TV. So my dad would always play music and and I remember that I started copying or mimicking what I what I would hear or see on TV on the second floor on the apartment in New York City. And then when I was 12 I was like, "You know what? I would like to do this. I think I could do music." Yeah. So it's been ever since then I decided that I wanted to do this. What kind of music was that? What kind of music were your parents listening to? <laughs> so they were listening to like Camilo Sesto, Leodan, which is like it's like music from like the eighties. Oh, oh wow! So yeah, whatever my dad used to listen to when he was like ten, that's how he would listen to when he was a little older. And yeah, you know, I, I became a fan of that type of music. That's cool. Would you say that that music influenced your sound today? Definitely did. Definitely did. Yeah. Because uh, after that, you know, when I moved to Dominican Republic, because in New York City, I was listening to my dad's music, but at that time, you know, whatever was popular in the city was whole, totally different. Right. right. I remember that when I left, uh, Who Let the Dogs Out? It was oh, like yeah. a big oh, hit. Wow. Yeah, when I left. So me getting to Dominican Republic against my will, you know, I didn't know, I had no idea we were going there. But all of a sudden they're like, yeah, we live here. Yeah. So I started listening to uh, all the music around me. Reggaeton was like getting big. It was just starting at that time, right? right? Or yeah. what, like It was just starting, yeah. yeah. Who was the biggest artist like, that you were hearing around that time? I would time? say uh, Vico C was a, yeah. a big one. Liti Polaco. It was mostly like rap, you know. Mm. Right. And then Daddy Yankee came out. Yep. Like Gasolina became big. But it's not, it wasn't until I listened to Rakim and Ken Y. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. Know, when I heard him saying like, down, si no tengo tu color. Yeah. Down. I was like, yo, so you can sing on this. Because I always knew I was a singer more than anything. Yeah. So then there was a Mexican band called, uh, well, Mexican and Argentinian called Sin Bandera. Oh, yeah. When I, man, that song, those songs just, they just hit me. And I was like, I got to do something. Wow. So, you know, we've interviewed a lot of musicians and some of them, like, you know, they say that they got introduced or they knew that music was their calling later on in life. It sounds like you knew from the beginning, like. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll never forget just. That apartment, second floor apartment in, in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Just That's cool. Just pretending that there was people there just performing. Actually, the first time I performed was at my uh, a family reunion for my grandma. Oh, wow. Uh, that was okay. the first time they were like, anybody want to, you know, any family member want to speak? And I said, hey, can I do something on the mic? And they're like, what? And I started singing and everybody was like, what? You, you, you like that? <laughs> How old were you at that time? Um, I must that That must have been in between... That's before I moved to the Dominican Republic, so I was like 11, probably. Oh, wow. You were pretty young. And that's the so, proving ground for, for Mexican or not Latino parties, you know, is just performing in front of family members. And they'll give you the, the biggest shit. You know, if, if you're not good, they'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. And if you're good, honest. they'll praise you. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it was, it was yeah. definitely insane. And that's my grandma cool. was super happy because uh, she was very uh, religious. And so the song that I performed was one called uh, Jesus Cristo. Mm. And I was oh, okay. singing that and she was like, oh, wow. She was proud of my dad, I think, too. So, like, oh, look, look at you. <laughs> That's awesome, man. And so let's talk a little bit about your background. So growing up in uh, New York, what was that like for you? 
Uh, it was a little tough, I would say, sometimes, because uh, my dad had a, a exporting uh, sewing machine business. Oh, oh he was gotcha. exporting machines. And for me, uh, as a kid who barely... So even though I was born in New York City, uh, we didn't know any English because, you know, I always spoke Spanish with my parents. So mm -hmm. when I was uh, signed up for school, I went to a school where nobody... It wasn't a bilingual school. Oh, gotcha. And mm -hmm. people were picking on me, all sorts of things. I remember that my mom would give me my lunch or I don't know what you call it, my, you know... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and kids would take it away from me. And then when I would oh. try to take it back, they would call the teacher and be like, hey, man, um, he tried to steal my lunch. And I was like, wow. no, that's mine. And then oh. the teacher would get mad at me because I didn't even know, I didn't, had no idea, you know, how to speak. You couldn't express yourself. Exactly. So eventually yeah. they found a, a Puerto Rican social worker. I remember this. And yeah. she asked me, what's wrong? And I said, hey, I can't, un I can't communicate. So she literally told, uh, you know, whoever was in charge, hey, man, this kid does not belong here. So they sent me to a bilingual school. Mm -hmm. And that's where things got way better. Gotcha. But you man, found a community. Rough. Oh, yeah, man. I, I was, I remember being yeah. mad. I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I was, I used to be home every day. Now I'm going to school. What is this? Yeah. And how old were you then? Was it like in kindergarten or was it? This first? is like, yeah. I, I don't even know what grade this was. This is like the first one. Oh, so first super grade young. Probably. Yeah. Wow, kindergarten. Yeah. man. Yeah. And so then you grew up in New York until you were about 11? Until I was like about 10. 10. -ish. Okay. Oh, yeah. so you were older when you left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And That's... what was the what was the reason behind that moving to back to DR? So my dad, he has always been a business person. So he decided that he wanted to open a pharmacy in the Dominican Republic. We opened oh, a pharmacy geez. in one of the first internet centers in Santiago, Dominican mm. Republic. Mm. Um, I see. Which is why I learned so much about music to begin with. If it wasn't for that internet center and me learning about computers so early on before like it became like a popular thing. You right. know, I got to discover so many artists and 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 cultural things from different parts of the world. Right. Gotcha. What was that like? So you land in the DR after so many years growing up in the US. That's all you knew, really, right? All I knew. All what, I knew. What was it like day one you land? I didn't even know Dominican Republic was a thing. Like I thought Dominican Republic was Santo Domingo, which is the capital. I thought that's what it was called. Because um, we would go like once in a while for like a busy. month. Oh, yeah. so you're already familiar with the area. Like you've been there before. A little bit, yeah, but never familiar for like living more than a month. Oh, yeah. sure. So as soon as as soon as soon we got there, actually, my mom dropped me off at my grandma's house somewhere in the Dominican Republic <laughs> in the rural areas. Yeah. And that was rough, like three months. So came back to uh, the house and my dad opened the business, the internet center. And he said, hey, I want you to learn how to use computers and stuff. So I literally, this is like 2002, by the way. So it's yeah. like very early on. Right. Really brand new. Yeah. Like it, it must have been literally the first internet center. I yeah. Bet. Yeah. And in that area, it was. Wow. It, was it was crazy for everybody. Oh, wow. It's like a cafe, right? Where you have like all these like yep. computers and stuff. People come, they pay like. Yeah, we had like few. 15 computers back then. And people would come yeah. and pay and they would be like, hey, man, can you teach me how to use this? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So were you helping people? Like, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. um. I learned, I mean, I didn't know myself, but after like a month or two of just playing on it every day, I would go on cartoonnetwork.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, wow. Those yeah. games are so much fun. Oh, man. You just gave me flashbacks wow, right now. Man. I That's bet you cool. got a ton of viruses on those computers, though. Oh, man. I, I, I went crazy. So eventually <laughs> yeah. I got tired of playing and I started going on chats and pretending that I was like 30. And I was like, <laughs> I, feel I was talking to people from all over the world, which I feel that's, that's what expanded me, uh, yeah, like my sure. mind. I just started reading about like, I would type, uh, there was no Google either. It was something, mm. I forgot what it was. Like AOL search or yeah, like Yahoo those or something. Things, yeah. Yeah. I, even had a, I even used uh, MSN Messenger. I remember that was a oh, thing yeah. back then. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah cool, no, and I would, type, uh, I would type like things, facts and, and stuff like that. And once I would learn them, I would go to my mom and be like, yeah, you know about this? You know this? Yeah. And that. <laughs> That's cool. That and so, cool. so how long were you living there for? I stayed in the Dominican Republic until I was... 16 i believe yeah 16 and then 16. i decided to leave and where'd you uh, go after that um so i started doing music around 15 okay uh well i started a band with my friends a pop rock band oh okay. and and it was a little harder in the dominican republic at the time because bachata yeah. merengue has always been the big thing especially in santiago yeah so People were like, what is that that you're playing, man? That's not the thing around here. <laughs> mm -hmm. so Wait, was, was like, it like, when you say pop punk, is like My Chemical Romance type stuff? Or like, was it... Yeah, so, kind of like that. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Camila, in, mm, more on the Spanish, yeah. on the Spanish side. Oh, okay, okay. 
And we were literally, you know, I, I would bring my guitar to school every day. Uh, me and my friends became like super popular. It, it was always like, that's cool. Hey, man. play me a song or sing, you know? Oh, okay. So that was your thing though. Like you were already building like an image for yourself as a musician yeah, since that young age. My dad, unfortunately, at that time, uh, didn't understand. He didn't really like that that much. Yeah. Oh, was he discouraging it? Uh, he was just saying, like, oh, it's hard, man. You know, it's really hard, huh? Yeah. yeah. I get it, though. You know, he had his own dreams. He wanted to be a, a professional boxer. He almost made it, but oh, wow. apparently he needed a signature from his mom, and she didn't sign, and Oof. he couldn't do it. So I get where he's coming from. Yeah. And, yeah. and I realized that we were very similar. That's why I decided that I wanted to leave like he did when he was younger and, and just, you know, do my own, my own path. And right. I remember when I told my mom and my dad, Hey, I want to move to North Carolina. Uh, they were like, well, who? And I said, well, I got an aunt over there. You yeah. know, she said that she'll take me. And that's when my world just completely changed. And I felt like completely not to sound like cliche or anything, but I just felt right. like depressed from like s such a huge change. Cause like, I thought it was crazy when we moved from here to the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm, but when right. I came back, it was a whole different world. I mean, I remember stay, uh, going to the bus stop, and there's this girl there, and I'm like, hey, uh, is this the right place? She's just staring at me. She wouldn't talk to mm -hmm. me at all, and I'm like, what's going on? Huh. Then I realized that there was a factor of, like, you know, racism is a thing, things like that. Right. Not sure if she was being racist or anything, but... She just didn't feel like she wanted to talk to me. And yeah. that was in North Carolina when you touched North Carolina, that? yeah. Wow. What city in North Carolina were you Raleigh. living in? Raleigh? Raleigh? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and you were, were you living in a smaller city in the Dominican Republic? Yeah, I was living in the, the second biggest city, San, second Santiago. Biggest. That's gotcha. what it's called. Mm. And so then you moved out here to Raleigh. Raleigh's a pretty decent-sized yeah, city, right? So it is. You, you moved to, like, a very urban city out here in the U.S. Man, what, what was that like? What did you... Like, start high school? Or, I mean, you were probably, like, in the middle so, of high school at that time. I was in the middle of high school, yeah. Yeah. I was on uh, my junior year. Gotcha. And so, you were by yourself, right? None of your friends, so you had to right. restart. Uh, no, nobody. Um, I go, I go to, uh, you know, it's first day of school. I make it in there, and I hear the, an announcement that they say that there's a Hispanic club. So, oh, I'm yeah. like, yo, let me sign up for this. Let yeah. me show people who I am. So, yeah. I'm like, I know it's going to work because it always worked for me in the Dominican Republic. It, yeah. was, it was always easy for me to shine in the Dominican Republic. So when I go to the, the club, like a weekend school, um, I start talking and, and people are yeah. laughing. <laughs> and I'm oh. like, why are people laughing? I realized that it's the way that I was being. It was just very different. You know, I was acting very, not that there's a problem with acting very Dominican, but it was just different, right? Like, yeah. How different, like when you say different, is like your accent or was that what they were making fun of or laughing at? Or? I, I was, I was trying to do like stand up something. Oh, like I was trying to gotcha. sing. Yeah. And they were, and they were just weirded out. They were like, yo, this your guy's humor's being weird. different. I yeah. see. I see. Gotcha. Okay. Like I get it now. Now that I'm, you know, it's been a couple of years. I'd be like, yeah, I was brand new in the country. I was acting. <laughs> yeah. I was acting off. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. But you eventually made friends, I assume. And you kind of assimilated. I made some friends. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean. Like a year later, I met these people that they wanted to do bachata. Oh, cool. Ooh, and they were all Dominican too. I was like, what? And they were <clears> like, yeah, just come play guitar and sing. Oh, nice. So I started performing almost every weekend all over North Carolina because oh, there was wow. a big demand for bachata bands back then. Yeah. I, um, I thought it was, you know, it was a great experience. I, I learned so, a lot, but I knew that bachata wasn't really my, my calling all the way. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I love bachata as a Dominican. But I knew that I wanted to do something more urban. That makes sense. So, yeah. so that only lasted but for like a year, and then I moved to uh, New York. Oh, you went yeah. back. Oh, so to you New moved York. back to New York. Yeah. Did you move in with family over there too, or? Uh, yeah, I had a godmother over there, or I have mm -hmm. a godmother. Yeah. And and then ended up in right away. We, I ended up in Patterson, New Jersey, Ooh. which is right there. You know. I've been there. That my dad's actually from there. Oh really? Oh, yeah, okay. I've been, dude. The <laughs> streets are rough over there, bro. Rough, yeah, <laughs> yeah. super rough. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's when things really got worse for me. I felt, yeah, because I was, you know, I was, I had just graduated high school, and I'm like, okay, so how am I gonna start this music thing? You know, it's been a couple of years now. You know, literally since I was ten, I've been wanting to do this. Right. And I'm like, how is it gonna happen? So I, I, I signed up for college, and I put music as my major. I didn't know what I was. I really didn't. Yeah, I, I like college, but I just didn't know what I was going to do. So I just right. put music. And I just felt like I wasn't going nowhere. I mean, I was living 
um, in my godmother's basement, which is a good place. And, and I think, you know, they're, they're, they're amazing. I love them. Yeah. But I just knew that I wanted uh, to feel more inspired. Mm, I wanted right. to, I wanted to get out of, you know, get out of my current situation. Right. Yeah. I wasn't doing good in school. I wasn't doing good uh, at my job either. So uh, I was literally on a blog and it says something about join the Navy. Oh, hmm. be a be a band member in the navy or something like that. A band member. Yeah. Wow. So I was like, "Yo, this is my this is it right here." <laughs> Yo, that sign must have been around for a while because my dad actually left at sixteen to join the navy, and I don't know how he got the paperwork through, but he must have saw that sign too, and he's like, "You know what? I'm gonna do that." <laughs> yeah. Right out of Patterson, New Jersey, too. Crazy. Yeah. yeah I mean, and I, and it's crazy because I never thought I'd be in the military. You know, right. I just. But I saw that and I called the guy and he got, he says, hey, man, I can't promise you that you're going to be in the band. Like, right. but how about we go through the p- paperwork in the process and let's get it working. Well, I did everything I had to do and then I didn't end up going in as a band member. Ooh. I ended up going in as an AO, which is a aviation um, ordinance man. So I was mm, pretty yeah. much uh, doing maintenance on missiles and bombs oh, wow. <laughs> to put them on, on jets. So... Wait, was that your choice not, or was it the, the military's choice? Well, they like, told yeah. me last minute, there's only three choices. He said, you can either be a, a cook, you can be a, on desk, which is literally like cleaning and, and mopping and, and yeah. doing things for the ship, or you can be AO, which is, I was like, uh, you know what? Let's do it. Right. Mm. Now, I made that decision on the spot. I was like, yo, what am I doing now? Like that same night at home, I was like, I came in because I wanted to do music. Now I feel like I'm getting further away from it. Right. Mm. But I signed up, went to boot camp, uh, thought it was crazy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie here and say that <laughs> it yeah. was, oh, it was amazing. Uh, it was, it was definitely life changing for me. Yeah. Um, went to uh, my training, and when they said, "Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be stationed at?" I said, "Oh, send me to, you know, East Coast, as close as home as possible." Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, they sent me to Washington State, Everett, Washington, <laughs> Everett, Washington. And wow. I, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm definitely not making it." I'm definitely not going to do music no more. Yeah. But I got here, and I'm not going to lie, that was the best decision and the best thing that could have happened to me. Because yeah. as soon as I got here, my friends, the people that I met, who are still my friends today, they started playing all the sorts of different music. Like, one of my yeah. friends just was, he was a big Weekend fan. Mm. Um, the other one would listen to Drake. I would always listen to, like, you know, Spanish music. So right. listening to all this... And starting to sing along, my, my friends were like, yo, you got a good voice, bro. Like, you sure you, you know, you want to want to do this? And they helped me out. Yeah. I'm not going to say that I, I was able to buy the full uh, recording kit, right. but they pitched in and, and we bought a recording kit and we were always recording in the barracks. Man, wow, those are some man. good friends. Yeah. Seriously. That's cool. Yeah. And I spent a whole year just recording things and, and, and polishing myself. Still didn't know what I was going to do, though. Um, then I went on deployment kind of towards the end of my enlistment and yeah. that's when things got really hard uh, i deployment really changes people i would say that you know just yeah. being out there right. isolated and, and 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 just not knowing if things are going to be okay when you come back and yeah. and and they were but to a certain extent it was crazy to think that when i came back it was actually harder than being on deployment i mean it, things was just different for me how so like how is it different i didn't feel inspired no more I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was actually going to re-enlist for another five years. So at that point, wow. I was like, I'm done, you know. Mm. But I thought about it, and I was like, nah, I got to keep fighting for what I've always wanted to do. So I decided to, um, um, you know, get out of the Navy, and I moved to North Carolina again. Mm. So this is 2018 now. Oh, wow. Okay. I moved to North Carolina, and... I just feel a lot of anxiety all the time because, like, it's crazy when you get out of the Navy, too, because, like, all these changes are going through, you know. Now, right. now you're, you, you, don't have ins- you don't have insurance. Your, your lifestyle is different. It's, it's just you're on your own. Yeah. So I didn't do music for that entire year. I, I was just, like, working for Dish Network. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. yeah, and uh, I did not enjoy being underneath houses all the time. That That... No, right. it got crazy. So I, I just made the decision. I got a phone call from um, a Navy contractor here. Oh, wow. They said, oh, we need someone, uh, you know, just looking for, for work or whatever. And I yeah. said, oh, uh, sign me up. 
and I came back to Washington State. And once again, Washington State, you know, did 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 its thing. I I I definitely felt inspired again. Yeah. Started doing music, dropped the first song, the Mentiras, 2020, and that picked up right away. And ever since then, the rest is history. You know, I've been been killing it so far with the numbers. Yeah, man, you've been uh, dropping a lot of great music, man. I've been I personally been bumping you lately a lot. Oh, thank um, you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we can pull up his Spotify right here. Yeah, I was just gonna say this is a uh, this is Leo's uh, Spotify um, account or not account, but I guess page, um, and you can find him there. And yeah, man, you have a you have quite a bit of music here. Yeah, I noticed a lot of singles. Do you have any uh, projects out working on, on, uh, on an EP right now? Okay, I'll yeah. call it a uh, nostalgic because I'm always yeah. a nostalgic person. I'm always thinking about the past and how. Right. How I felt in different times of my of my life. So that's I'm cool. working on that right now, and it should be dropping pretty soon. That's cool. That's cool in man. listening to your music, I noticed you're you're a great storyteller for one. But I noticed a lot of your stories are kind of like love stories and like kind of like past oh, yeah. loves, past <laughs> love situations, and a lot of people can relate to that. You know, um, you know, where, where do you draw your inspiration? Do you draw it from like personal stories, or is it a lot of it kind of just stories of friends and stuff like that? So. Uh, I have gotten my heart broken a bunch of times, but, yeah. <laughs> but and, and vice versa too, you know. Right. But definitely, I get it from personal uh, stories of things that have happened to me. Yeah. Uh, also, I kind of like to generalize at the same time. So, if I know that a friend went through this, and I kind of went through something similar, so yeah. I'll kind of do a a, 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 coll a collab of, I feel <laughs> of ideas. I yeah, see. you kind of mix it up. Yeah, um, can we pull up some of his music videos too? Yeah. Okay, we got his YouTube right here. Yep, this is his YouTube page. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about this visualizer one. This is the latest one that you published, right? Yeah, the Lidio. The Lidio. The Lidio. I like the the effect on this. It almost feels like a dream sequence, but that's the name of the song is the Lidio, right? It's de yep. like delirious. Yeah. So the the concept on this song, I I wanted to kind of do like a fusion between uh, between kind of like rock uh, those elements and bring it into kind of like the reggaeton yeah. world and I, and I I thought this song was actually giving um, the community something new yeah. for, to appreciate yeah no I thought it, I thought it was really cool the visuals and all of that who do you collab with for like your visuals who does your camera stuff so I always try to find uh, different um, artists to work with like oh, cool. uh, I just worked with uh, Fuego he's from the area mm. oh cool um, this one is a, a guy from Portland oh nice oh okay oh okay, Josh cool, he, he's a good uh, he's really good with the uh, working on After Effects and Adobe. Yeah, okay. that is really cool. Could you pull up the video for uh, Historia La Historia? There yeah, that's the right. one, the Fuego. This one is, yeah. is so dope, man. I almost feel like I've been to, is that arcade in West Seattle by chance? It is, it okay, is. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> we've been there. Yeah, yeah, we have? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they were nice to let us film in there. This song was really dope. I feel like the song, the video, the story, like it all matched up like really well. It's very well done, man. I, thank I you, think, thank like, you. Like, yeah. give you a lot of props for that. And shout out to shout Kid out. Cambo too, man. <laughs> yeah, one Kid of our Cambo. previous yeah. guests Cambo on the show. We had him on the show, man. Yeah, he know, he pulled Cambo. up. I actually hit him up like two days prior because I thought that the person that was gonna supposed to do that part, oh, that they already had it. And they're like, oh no, we don't. So I hit him up last minute, and he, he just pulled, pulled up. up. He, he pulled did up. it. That's a real homie, right? It's the homie right there. That's really cool, man. And you just, um, that's cool, man. I can tell you have a lot, you invest a lot into your production, not just the mm -hmm. music, but the visuals, you know, your social media is on point. I think that's, that's really important. And that kind of leads me to my next question. How has social media helped you in your career and how do you use it to kind of leverage and, uh, you know, build your audience? Oh, a lot. So social media, to be honest. Uh, so when I was doing music in the, in the barracks back in the Navy, yeah. I did drop a song called uh, La Maldad. It's my first one there. And I noticed that that song didn't do as well, but it wasn't because of the song in itself. It's because yeah. a lot of artists, like myself at that time, a lot of us just drop music thinking that, oh, yeah, let me just drop it and hopefully it'll, it'll pop just, off. It'll pop yeah. off. But it's because a lot of us don't know the truth. And the truth is, is that every artist in the community, no matter who they are, we can go all the way up to Drake and go all mm -hmm. the way up to the, the first person that started. If there's no, no marketing done, it's just gonna be really hard, right? Yeah. And the problem with that is too, a lot of them, a lot of the artists like to uh, lie on on 
you know, probably on podcasts, just like we're now. <laughs> yeah. they, they like to say, oh, I just got lucky, you know, thank thank God that, like, you know, I just went to sleep and then the next day I had 100 million views. Yeah. And, you know, I, I guess it's better to say that instead of saying, oh, no, I actually started working and, you know, I was marketing myself and stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, for me, you know, I did a cover uh, called uh, El Mismo Aire and I did a couple other covers. Oh, yeah. And they started going crazy on TikTok at first. Oh, TikTok, man. I'm glad yeah. to hear that you're on TikTok because <laughs> yeah. that's the best. I think that's the best it social is, media right is. now. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I mean, and then I, I moved it to, uh, I, I posted the same videos on Instagram. Yeah. And I got a shout out from one of the artists. And I think I think that video has like 750,000 views. Oh, wow. wow. Somewhere underneath there in, in my feed. And wow. that's uh, when I started gaining a bunch of followers. Yeah, and so the actual artist that you did the cover for reached out to you? Wow, this yeah. is the one wow. right Wow, what artist was that? Uh, Camilo. Camilo, oh wow, okay. Yeah, this is the one that has 750,000. Yeah. And you're still an independent artist, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Do you plan, I mean, you know, a lot of, some people don't feel comfortable sharing that, but do you plan on continuing to stay independent? Are you open to, like, signing a deal? I'm always open. I'm always open yeah. to sign a deal. Um, I, I also think that it's very important for uh, artists like me and, you know, to, to do their research. I almost signed yeah. a deal, actually, recently. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. um, but... You know, if it wasn't for the for the research that I had done before, I almost would have put myself in a bad position. So yeah, that's why I think that it's uh better to know what you want and and know what you're getting too as well. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. For me, you know, I don't I didn't think it, that what I was gonna get was enough. So I I decided yeah. to keep going my route. Yeah, I feel that. That's the thing about the music industry too. Is like it's like the artist side. And the business side, you know, and mm -hmm. you got to kind of know both. Yeah. How have you dealt with that world? I mean, it sounds like you've done your research and you're doing that. Um, you know, how, how do you deal with that kind of that learning about that business side, too? Right. So for me, the business side, I had to. So yeah. going back to the first song that I dropped, that song was a headache, too. So I paid some of the people, the producers to get the beats done and everything. And a lot of them didn't get back to me for like a whole year. Oh, wow. So that's when I quickly started realizing that in this business, it's just really hard to not get scammed. Everybody's yeah. trying to scam me. Everybody's promising. I mean, I got to tell you, there's a lot of artists that get scammed on a daily basis because there's people that hit them up and say, hey, man, I promise you that if you pay me uh, $200, I can get you, you know, these amount of views or whatever. Yeah. Three huh. million views. And then they'll go around and just pay for, you know, bots and stuff. And, and, and a lot of artists, it's just so sad that they don't know about this. But what I always tell, um, and, I'll, and I'll go ahead and say it here for anybody that's, yeah. you know, listening. If anybody promise you instant success, you know, it's a scam. Yeah. Right. You know, that's not, you know, it just uh, success doesn't work that way. It, it's, it takes hard work and, and dedication. Yeah. You know, anybody can, for me, for example, I, right now at this moment, I'm at 20,000 monthly listeners. But that took me, you know, a couple months. Of, right going up and i was happy when right. it was at two thousand. i was happy when it was five thousand, and i'm happy now and yeah and i just keep enjoying you know every single growth that i get but yeah. I, at least i know that it's 100 percent me and yeah and that's the way and it's organic too it's yeah. it's not driven by or inflated by you know social right media because gimmicks. because when you post a song on, on spotify um spotify goes off of the first listeners mm -hmm. to know what type uh, of people to, to you know throw your music at right if your first listeners are not real, and especially if they mm -hmm. have listened to a couple of like, random ass songs because they're all like, you know, the listeners are not, they're just bot generated or whatever, then Spotify doesn't know where to send your music to. And, and that's what happens. So there's no mm -hmm. growth. So you just have static numbers. Yeah. So that's if if I was an artist or if any anyone's an artist listening, like, and I wanted to say, hey, I want to get to Leo's like status right now, like. What would you reckon them, recommend that they start doing, like in terms of building their, their Spotify audience or like marketing that you've learned? Yes. So definitely focus on the music first. Make sure that the song, the song is good. If you got a good song, <laughs> right. you know, the song's got to be good. But after that, don't trust anything or anybody but Facebook ads yeah, yeah. or any other so, uh, sort of advertisement that you can see is tangible and you can see results. Yeah. Right? If someone mm -hmm. tells you, you give me this money and I'll get you this, 
You know, who are they? You know, how, how can someone control 20,000 people? Right. Yeah. So you got to do it yourself so that you can see the results. So me, for example, I got my own ad budget campaign mm. and it gets me a certain amount of, uh, of fans and those fans reach out to other people and the algorithm of Spotify also sends from me to other people and that's how I keep growing. Yeah. Always. I see. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. Going back to the music though, who are some of your biggest inspirations? Uh, oh, wow. So my biggest inspiration has always been a mix, right? So I like, yeah. I like rap, although I don't rap. It's always been, uh, well, I kind of do it in a way that I'm singing. Right. But Vico C, right from the jump, uh, back in the you know, late 90s, that's what I used to listen to. I had no idea why I was listening to him either because like, <laughs> he, he was just rapping all the time and, and doing all this. And I just felt inspired by that, even yeah, though right. I, I had nothing to do with, with, with the lyrics, with, what they were saying. But Sin Bandera, Camila, uh, those people have inspired me a lot. Yeah. The way they, they, would, they would connect with the, an audience and, and the way they would make people feel, it was amazing to me and impressive. Yeah. And, you know, that's what pushed me to, to be here where I am right now. That's cool. How, for someone who hasn't heard your music before, how would you describe your style and your sound? Uh, my style is definitely, I would say, like a mix of like, uh, kind of like urban pop. Yeah. But not really all the way pop. It has a lot of, uh, uh, I like I like reggae. I like, um, what do you call that? That other, I like dancehall a lot. So dance I, I, I kind of yeah. put an infusion in there. Uh, a lot of people like to say that, you know, they they would say Latin, urban, R&B. Mm. That, that's a good description, I would say. That's cool, man. And you're also, it seems like you're into fashion, man. You're right. probably one of the most fashionable guests we've had so far. <laughs> and you have your stylist here, too. Yeah, man. I Jamal. Think... Shout out to Jamal, Shout out to man. Jamal. He's always killing it. Killing it. Man, that's cool. What, are, is that another space that you plan on going into, or is that just more of a personal preference that you have? Uh, it's definitely a space that I want to learn more about and, yeah. and definitely get into. I think that... Uh, the way you present yourself is the way that people would also think yeah. about you. Yeah, I, I feel like if my music doesn't sound aligned to what I look like uh, when I'm, uh, you know, uh, out there, then it's it's a mismatch. And when people yeah. see a mismatch, you know, people catch that right away. I right. agree, man. It's the marketing, right? <laughs> exactly. And like the best, the most important part of the marketing is yourself, right? Yeah. Your style, mm -hmm. how you approach yourself. That's cool, man. That's that's really cool. I think a lot of people could learn from that, not just artists, but anybody who's in, you know, trying to be in a profession where people see you and your image um, kind of captivates your business, right? Right, right. I mean, yeah. imagine you're getting surgery and then the doctor comes in dressed as, you know, something else. <laughs> yeah, man, you're probably going <laughs> like to walk up out of there. You'll be like, yo, why is there a pilot over here? <laughs> oh, man. oh, man, that's good. Yeah, no, that's cool. So what's coming up for you, like, as far as shows, music, and other stuff? So I got, I'm working on an EP right now. Um, got a show on uh, April 5th. Then after that, I'm, I'll be going to the Dominican Republic. And uh, June, I'm over the, going over there to do a media tour. And oh, wow. Don't have the dates yet on the performances over there in the Dominican Republic, but it's definitely going to be fun to be part of uh, for the first time to be performing in my home country. That's awesome. That's gonna man. be incredible, man. Yeah. That is so cool. Have you how many performances have you done up to this point? So counting the bachata ones, I would say that I perform about fifty five times. Or... Oh wow. Wow, man. How about recent though? Recent, Not counting so the last year ones. last year I performed uh let's see. So in Seattle I did like five performances. And... Yeah. Probably like 10 overall. Oh, wow, man. You've been putting in yeah, work. What, what's your best memory of performing out here in Seattle? Oh, my best memory was performing with Mediums Collective on a boat. <laughs> oh, that yeah. Was real, that was really fun. That's dope. Lie. Man, shout out to Mediums Collective. Yeah, we Mediums had Collective. them on the, on the pod, too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool, awesome. man. That's good vibes. Before we wrap up, I want to. I always like to ask artists this question. What's like your creative process? Because I know everybody's different. Do you get into like a dark room? Do you got to be outside? Do you take a walk? How do you, like, write your songs? So it's definitely got to be nighttime. I'm, nighttime. I'm a night yeah. person. I feel that. I, and I do like uh, my rooms to be a little darker. I don't yeah. like the lights on. I, I kind of just start playing beats. And when I play the beats, I just do melodies on it. Once I got a good melody, then yeah. I'll start writing the lyrics. It's usually always how it works for me. I've never been able to have, like, 
the lyrics first and then the beat sure. just comes. Yeah. I always go off of a beat and, and I just start freestyling on my, you know, myself with the melodies. I feel that. Do you like, do you get inspired by certain situations in your life? Like, do you have to wait for kind of something to come up that inspires you? Mm -hmm. Or are you the type of person that just like, I'm going to set up this block of time to sit down and write music? When I do that, it doesn't work as, as good as I, I would like to. Yeah. So for me, it's like, I do it almost every other night. Okay. I, I sit in the studio and, and I, I try to write. But if I force it, it really doesn't come to me. Like, I, yeah. I can't do it on the spot. Uh, my muse always just comes when it's the right moment in the right time period. Yeah, I feel that. That's cool. And you, you've you been doing some collabs, right? You were We were talking a little mm -hmm. bit before we yeah. started recording. I don't know if you could speak on it publicly yet, but do you have any collabs that are coming up? Um, that so, you want to talk about? So one that's coming uh, right up is uh, actually with a DJ from uh, from Spain. He has an artist oh. called... Uh, um, it, well, you got Kit Campbell, and then you got Matt Lasong. That's the one I'm doing the collab with in Spain. Nice. And it's a reggaeton song. It's coming out next month. Okay, oh, cool, cool. Still cool. have a date on it, but... Well, gotcha. we'll plug it when, it when it drops. We'll put it in the description for thank everyone. You, thank you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, um... Yeah, man, that's cool. Is that your song or is that their song or is it kind of just their like, song? Their gotcha. Song. gotcha. And you're, you're dropping there. a feature on it. Cool, 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 man. Well, man, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast, you know, sharing your story. It's been my pleasure. Very Thank powerful you. story, man. And we're honored that you, you came all the way over here to, to share. Oh, always, anytime. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Well, yeah, we'll have all of your uh, info in the bio. So anybody that wants to learn more about Leo Crass, please feel free to click the link in the bio. And don't yeah. forget to subscribe to our channel. Follow us on TikTok. Follow us on Instagram. And catch us next time.